Man Hour Nation, it's time to get shocked. Normally when I get on the old interwebs, I'm a master troll. If you guys don't know what a troll is, just follow me on Facebook and you know exactly what a troll is. But this one is going out to the Green Bay Packer fans. These Packer fans are up in arms that the Green Bay Packers and Matt LaFleur have officially parted ways with Amari Rodgers. Amari Rodgers was a former third-round pick for the Green Bay Packers just a couple years ago. But I got to ask you this question. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of, of all ages, Green Bay Packers fans in general, what has Amari Rodgers done for you in the last two seasons? I'll wait. Oh. You guys can't answer that question because he's done jack shit for you. All he does is fumble the ball and drop passes when he gets in. He is like the seventh string receiver on that team or was the seventh string receiver on that team. So why are you guys all pissed off when when the Green Bay Packers are trying to make moves to get you guys into the playoffs and possibly a Super Bowl berth? Give Aaron Rodgers the farewell tour that he possibly wants. And you guys are all, oh, the Green Bay Packers don't want to win. We're cutting our best receiver. You guys don't have any receivers. Sammy Watkins is your best guy, and he is like James Winston. He's never healthy. Like, like At the end of the day, shut up, move on, and understand your roster before you get all pissed off when the Green Bay, Green Bay Packers cut a fumble-prone receiver. Actually, he's not even a receiver. He's just a special teams guy. He's, he receives punts, and he fumbles those nine times out of, like, out of ten. So, hey, it is what it is, but it's time to cue that intro. Are you ready for the best damn radio show on the planet? Man Hour Nation, rise up. Every time, no. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host, Mike? Fucking calm. You know they ain't more to you know that that's us when we talking about sports. Uh, Giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, tell us some more. Oh no, your station not dropping no music. Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Down four on the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck Mike and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're out the dark. No LA, we a big spark. No fourth and inches won't cut short. Got the best talking this all sports. Buzzing more than buzzer beaters. We coming live all three speaks, go. And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Bakasha here with the Man Hour. Be sure to head over to manhourradio.com. Check out the merchandise page. Just go check out the blog section as well. If you guys do not know, let me remove this little project from me. Look at this new merch that just dropped. Maybe next year since 1957, the Detroit Lions troll merch is officially out here, guys. So if you guys have a Detroit Lions fan in your family or you know somebody or if you're a Detroit Lions fan, head over to manhourradio.com. Simply click on that merch button and bada bing, bada boom, it is right there. $39 for a hoodie, $29 or it's like $20, $25 for like a long sleeve tee, guys. This stuff is fantastic. However... I like my hoodies a little bit of baggy. This is a, a 2XL, and this this is uh, just about right. So I say it is true to size a little bit. So if you guys like some troll merch, get it out here. But Detroit Lions, maybe next year since 1957. And I got my Buffalo Bills troll, troll, troll merch on the way as well. But guys, it is Wednesday, and that means one thing and one thing only. It is way or no way Wednesday. We post some questions out there on the old interwebs, and then me and BC Calm simply answer the question, is it a way or is it a no way? Factor crap or whatever you guys want to call it. It is a way or no way Wednesday. Also, we're going to break down Beasties NFL Week 11 power rankings. Before we get too carried away, I got to welcome the 5'4", 215-pound, the myth, the legend, the wake, the greatness, the peanut butter to my ladies, Brandon Beastie Combs. What's going on, Beastie? What is going on, Michael Buckheister? What is going on, Man Hour Nation? All the people listening to us on YouTube, Facebook, wherever you're at, make sure you click, click that like, share, and subscribe. Also, for all those people listening to us still, you know, in England, they like to 
drink their tea and eat their crumpets and right. <laughs> listen to man hour. That's just what they do in England. There's nothing else to do. I mean, the queen died, so they, it's not like they have anything else to do. They're yeah. sitting in their houses. They're 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 sad and they're listening to man hour. Yeah, screw those women. Well, women suck anyways. Yeah, so f them. No, I'm I'm, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but we do Whoa. have some great people Whoa. in the chat tonight, guys. I see my man Alpha Rob, uh, as always, a loyal guy over here at YouTube.com forward slash manner. What's up, uh, Alpha Rob? They got Drew, a member over here. What's up, Drew? I'm glad you are in tonight. Long time no see from my man Drew. It's been a few weeks here, and uh, right off the bat, Drew is like, Combsy, you're back. Every Wednesday, guys, Combs is here. He gives you the good news about the NFL power rankings. Of course, you got Mama Buck in the house. What is up, Mama? I'm really excited to see you in a couple days. Just don't bring Dad because he's a sourpuss. He's a Detroit Lions fan. But maybe next year, baby. Maybe next year. I don't know. I just <laughs> Combs. I am super proud of proud of proud of this this like merch, man. I'm just. <laughs> I, hey, anytime you get a chance to take a shot at Lions fans, I'm down with it. Right. <laughs> it is it, it is great but uh let me get out the old phone here and pull up a text message from beastie uh from tuesday morning man we text way too much combs uh there yeah, it is <laughs> so with that being said nfl power rankings have officially been released guys week 11 power rankings are out and there have been some massive changes some teams got moved out. Some teams got moved in. So let's start right here at number 10, Combsy. And you do have the Cincinnati Bengals getting back up into the top 10. Explain to me why you have them in the top 10. Because the Cincinnati Bengals are still the defending AFC champs. The Cincinnati Bengals are a team that, you know, to me, sitting there, at, well, I believe they're five and four, if I memory serves me correct. I, I really like Joe Burrows. I like what they have with their wide receiver core. I, I'm a believer in what they're doing. They've got a pretty, should have a pretty easy win this week against the Steelers. They do have a tough schedule two weeks after that with Titans and Chiefs. But then after that, I mean, it, it gets a little bit easier um, for them. So I, I like the, the Bengals. I think that they are going to uh, finish the season strong, and that's why I have them in at number 10. Yeah, so you do have them coming in at number 10, and then they're currently second in the AFC North, and the team that is in first in AFC North, and that is the Baltimore Ravens. Combs, people were up at arms saying that the Bengals, or they're, sorry, the Ravens are a top five team, they're a top four team, they're this and this and this, and you have them at number nine. Spoiler alert, guys, he didn't have the Ravens in the top 10 last week, so they bumped them up. So why do you have them so low when everybody thinks they're a top five team in the NFL? Well, they're on a three-game win streak. Um, they're not a top-five team in the NFL right now. Um, they're just not. Uh, six and three right now. Uh, they've beaten the Browns, the Bucks, the Saints the last three weeks. Uh, they do have that good win over the Bengals. Uh, but when they played the really good teams in this league so far this season, the Dolphins, the Bills, the Giants, all three of those have been losses for them. So, you know, I'm not uh, – I'm not going to I'm not going as far as you to say Lamar Jackson's trash, but I'm also not going as far as saying that this is a top 5 football team when they're clearly not. Right. Uh so uh if you've been watching the Man Hours uh Combs, I've explained why Lamar Jackson is not very good, but let's stay in the AFC and go back to the East. How does this sound coming out of your mouth? The AFC East is probably the best division in football right now from top 2 to to to, to like bottom and coming in at number 8 we do have the New York football Jets. Wow, that still sounds weird coming out of mouth at eight weeks later. <laughs> but they, they did bump down in the rankings a little bit. You have them at number eight. Why do you have them at number eight? Uh, I have them at number eight just because, look, I people want to go at me and say, well, they beat Buffalo and they should be higher than Buffalo. And I, I tell people all the time, just because a team beats one other team doesn't mean that they're in there, right? Like, I'm not putting the Jaguars ahead of the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm not putting the Colts ahead of the Kansas City Chiefs, right? Like, we're not we're not doing something stupid like that. So I'm not also not going to to put it out there. I don't trust them as much as I trust the teams that are ahead of them. They're having a good season. They're having a good run. At some point this season, I do expect them to wake up and realize that they are the Jets. Um, you know, it's going to hit them one time where they're putting on this, their their uniform in the locker room or something. They're going to be like, oh, shit, wait, 
for the Jets, <laughs> and they're going to go right back to form. So, Stupid. I I don't believe I I don't believe in them as much as I believe in the teams that are higher than them right now. Yeah, and a team that uh, many people have faith in, even though they dropped to the Kansas City Chiefs, my Kansas City Chiefs, last week, and that is the Tennessee Titans. They play tomorrow versus a re-energized Green Bay Packers team, but you do have them at number seven. Let's talk about that. Why are, why are they so low after their five-game winning streak? Uh, again, they, they're they a team that, I mean, for one, their their quarterback's been hurt. Um they are they rely a lot on on King Henry. Um, and that gets them into trouble a lot late in seasons. It gets them in trouble a lot in the playoffs because they rely so heavily on King Henry. It, it they become a little bit easier to beat later on in the season. Um, whether it's he gets worn down or defenses are just stronger. I'm I'm not sure what it is, but they always find a way to to hunker down down the stretch. Now I do expect them to beat the Green Bay Packers. Um, and, and, you know, for obvious reasons, the Packers just aren't that good. And so I just, I, I think that the Titans are, are spot on with where they're at in the standings. Yeah. So, uh, and the power rankings. Yeah. Moving back over to the AFC East, the powerful AFC East, that still doesn't sound right coming out of it like, like out of the mouth, but the team that is number one in the division currently is the Miami Dolphins at number six yeah. Combs at six that low. Yeah, at number six, look, I and I know what people are saying, and, and they look at the power rankings, and they look at the division standings, and again, we got to remember that the Miami Dolphins, while they are a good team, I think they might have the best wide receiver duo in the league with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. Their quarterback is... Like he's, we've seen him die twice on the field. Like, so <laughs> I just, I don't know that, that I, I really want to put all my eggs into one basket. Um, their schedule down the stretches is, is pretty tough as well. Uh, you know, they've got, um, they've got the Texans this week, but after that, they got the Niners, Chargers, Bills, Packers, Patriots, and Jets. So it, it's not an easy schedule down the stretch. We are going to see what they're made of. We're going to be able to see what they're made of. They play the Niners, Chargers, and Bills back-to-back-to-back on the road. Um, So we're definitely going to see what the Bills are made of here really soon. Um, I just don't think that they are – they're not the best team in the AFC East. They're not the best team in the AFC. Um, Right now, they're just just ahead of them right now. Yeah, uh, so, like, it is what it is. A team that is ahead of them that, that has already beaten the Buffalo Bills. Or sorry, yeah, they beat the Buffalo Bills. That's it's the Buffalo Bills, and they come in at number five. The Buffalo yeah. Bills went from first to third in the AFC East standings after losing to the uh, uh, Jets last week, right? Or sorry, to mm-hmm. the Vikings, I should say. And uh, but you still have them higher than everybody in the AFC East. Justify that. So the Buffalo Bills lost a really tough game to a really good Minnesota Vikings team. I think people underestimate, and nobody's really been talking. I mean, the Vikings are 8-1. And And before that game against the Buffalo Bills, it was always, well, they only beat this team, but they did it without this person, or they did it without this person. Let's see what they can do when they go into Buffalo. And they went into Buffalo, they fell down early, and and they got themselves back up. Justin Jefferson was absolutely out of his mind in that game. Um, and so the Buffalo Bills lost a tough one at home. They've got a quarterback playing with a bad UCL. Um, as they get healthier, they're just going to return to form. I still believe the Buffalo Bills are probably the best team in the AFC. I still believe they're the team to beat, and that is why I have them ahead of the other two teams in the AFC East. Uh Oh, so just to clarify, you mean the AFC East is not the AFC, right? Because there's a team better I, I than them in the that, AFC. Let's just believe, be honest about it. I still believe the Buffalo Bills are the best team in the AFC, even better than your Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, we will be talking about that later tonight. But coming in at number four, you do have the New York Football Giants. People are legit pissed off about this. They're like, <laughs> how are they so high? Head to head, yada yada yada. Explain to me why you have them at number four and not. And basically, people are saying they they, they don't even deserve to be in in the top ten. Well, I, look, I, the, how do the Giants not deserve to be in the top 10? Like, I, I mean, seriously, people that say this stuff are people of fans of teams that just don't like the New York Giants. 
Like this team has shown time and time again, week after week, that they are for real. They're seven and two. They've got some good wins on their uh, schedule. They beat the Ravens. Uh, they they uh, they beat the Titans. Uh, they beat your your so called resurgent Packers. Um, <laughs> this team is is pretty good. They have had a home heavy schedule in the first half, very home heavy, um, and so I. We're going to see here on the back end to see what they can do. But I, I just, I, dude, the Lions are for real. I mean, or I'm sorry, the, the Giants are for real. I was looking at their schedule. They're playing the Lions this week. Yeah. Um, then they got the Cowboys on Thanksgiving Day. Um, and, you know, I, I think that this seems real. I think they're going to beat the Cowboys on Thanksgiving, too. There you go. Uh, so uh, coming in at number three, a team fresh off of a loss. I hate to toot my own horn, but I'm going to toot it. Toot, toot. I called this, and I told you that the Eagles are not not very good. As soon as you put them at number one, they're going to come right back down. And that is who you have at number three, and that is the Philadelphia Eagles. Are they still even a top five team after the Commanders laid that blueprint of how to beat them? Um, I don't think they laid a blueprint for how to beat them, right? I think what happened was... You had some really uncharacteristic turnovers from this Eagles offense. You had some really bad missed calls. That that missed face mask call was oh, insane here we go. to me. And, and I, I saw that, and I was like, damn. I, but look, I, what I've been watching out of this league for the last, you know, I don't know, two years, it doesn't surprise me that you've missed calls. you got to overcome that stuff. Right. you got to be able to overcome the turnovers. Uh, I don't think that there's a blueprint for beating them. Uh, I think it was a very tough played uh, division rivalry game. And so that's that's why the Eagles only dropped uh, to three for me. All righty. So uh, I still think they have a like a lot of flaws in their game, and I think the commanders kind of explode that a little bit and definitely did lay out the blueprints, but that is a debate for next week when the Eagles lose again this week versus the Indianapolis Colts. But coming in at number two, you do have the Kansas City Chiefs. This team uh, is clicking right now, Combs. Uh, me, as a Chiefs fan, I think they're peaking a little too early, but you do have them at number two and not number one. And the team you do have at number one is the Minnesota Vikings, the team that just beat down the Buffalo Bills, arguably the best team in the AFC. Why don't you have those two flip-flopped? I was extremely impressed with what I saw to the Minnesota Vikings in Buffalo. Um, I, I watched this team and I watched this team do their thing. And if they play like that, I don't know that there's a team that can stop them. If Jeff, if Justin Jefferson catches passes the way he was catching passes and the way he was playing the rest of this season, I don't know that they lose another game and that might finally get them a trophy in their trophy case. This Minnesota Vikings team is really freaking good. And I mean really freaking good. Yeah. Um, the Kansas City Chiefs, for me, having them at number two, look, they're they're a good squad. You're right. They are clicking on all cylinders right now. Um, and I just – I, for me, the Minnesota Vikings are just – they're just that team. And I, I really don't know – how you're going to game plan for them. Plus they have a better record than the Kansas city chiefs right now too. So um, I just, I was really impressed with, with, with Minnesota and Buffalo. Yeah. Uh, that had been one of the most exciting games that I have seen as a NFL fan. And I would have hate to been a Buffalo bills fan. I like at that point, because they legit blew a 14 point lead in the first half to lose in overtime. I'm just glad that Josh Allen did get a chance to touch the ball because I could hear it now. Oh, he didn't get a chance to sweat away, whatever, right? But I'm glad he got a chance to throw the interception at the end of the game uh, to basically solidify him as not a crunch time quarterback. But we you know do... what I was surprised about, Buck, what's that with these with these power rankings? Cowboys fans did not complain. Well, when you give up a 14 point loss, so I saw a, a stat, Combs. The Cowboys were 180 and 0 when they had a 14 point plus lead in a game. They have never given up a 14 point lead in their history of the or, or a 180 games worth, right? And that was the first time. That was the first first time ever. 
That's and, crazy to me. And as I saw on uh, tw- 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 Twitter, uh, I think it was like the Andy girl. It's like, hey, Mike McCarty finally helped the Packers win a game by c- coaching her or something like that, right? <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> but yeah, it is what it is. So we do have some comments popping up here that I like to a uh, a address Combs, a rogue Jedi over here at youtube.com forward slash man hour. He says the Dolphins have the cheetah, the penguin, and the goat. They should be at number four in your power rankings. What you have them at what at number eight, right? Number eight, where they have them? No, you have them yeah. at at number six. Could you possibly flip flop them and the Giants? Like, like, how can they get up to a number four in your eyes? Which team are we talking about? The Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins. What? Why do you want the Miami Dolphins so high? I mean, what what about the Miami Dolphins is is impressing you more than the teams that are ahead of them? I mean, I, are you talking about you know their their um, their schedule? Their you know the when they played teams like the the Bengals and the Jets and the Vikings and they got blown out by all of them. Were you talking about, or are you more impressed by their four point win over the Ravens and their two point win over the Bills? Hey, the, uh, those were also like, 14 point comebacks, though, too, Combs. Let's, yeah, let's not I, forget I, that. I get it, but those yeah. were also, both of those were early in the season and they were, they were impressive wins. I had yeah. the Dolphins higher earlier in the season. But right now, look, they, in the last four weeks, they've won all their games, but they've played the Steelers, Lions, Bears, and Browns. And they got the Texans this week, so they're probably going to win again. <laughs> I, I'll be more impressed. They can get up to four. If they run this gauntlet these next three weeks, they could probably even get higher than four. If they beat the Niners, Chargers, and Bills on the road, I'll be a believer. Yeah. I just don't think that that's the case. I don't think – I think that it's smoke and mirrors with the Miami Dolphins. I think that Tua is one strong hit away from from dying in front of us on national television. Like, it, I – I just don't – I'm not a big believer. I do. I think they've got, again, the best wide receiver tandem in the league is in Miami. Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill are a dynamic threat. And then yeah. you add Jaseki to that. Um, they've got a good run game. I just – to me, Tua Wilson is just Jr., too yeah. small. And I don't believe that, that they are a team – that is going to be healthy down the stretch. And I don't th- believe that they are a team that can beat the top tier teams either. Yeah. So only time will tell obviously, but obviously as Miami fans, these next three weeks are very, very huge for them. Alpha Rob also says over here at youtube.com forward slash man hour. If you guys have not subscribed or hit that like button yet, please do so. He says the Miami Dolphins offense will fade as the weather gets colder. I don't know. Like, I mean, obviously in Miami, it's always like 70 degrees, right? When you go up north and play a cold, yeah, and a Miami's cold team. A, yeah, Miami's a tough place to play. Right. I mean, it, it, it is. Um, but they're they're not going to be playing in in Miami, you know, after this week. They're not playing in Miami for another three weeks. You know, they've got to go to Buffalo right. in the cold. I mean, Buffalo's supposed to get six feet of snow this weekend. Sweet. I love it. Six feet of snow. Send it this down here weekend. to Indiana, baby. I cannot. <laughs> I, dude, I just want to watch that football game. If they really get six feet of snow in a weekend, I want to see what that football game looks like. Every you know year they I mean? seem like, to get those 12 feet of snow and people are like, hey, come I've over never to heard the stadium. That in a Help weekend, us plow out the snow, right? Not in a weekend. They're supposed yeah. to get three feet in one day. Like, that's that's a lot of freaking snow. Um, and so I, like, I'm really interested to see how that one shakes out. Yeah. Uh, if they do actually get that much snow, a lot of times, you know, especially in the Northeast, they'll call for these big nor'easter storms, they call them. And, and then you get a dusting. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> if they get that much snow though, I'm going to be really intrigued to watch this football yeah. game. Uh, do you remember what, like, what, what was it last year? I think it was the Buffalo bills and the Patriots. Right. And you literally couldn't see like two feet in front of the can- can- camera. Like you just kind of saw like figures running around. Like it was, it was nasty. Like, like yeah. in that game, but drew o- over here at youtube.com says that the giants do not have an office without Shaquan Barkley. Drew, you are right to an extent, but right now that offense is running strictly through Daniel Jones on his legs and running a lot of RPOs with with uh, uh, Shaquan. But Combs, can the Giants stay relevant without Shaquan? Yeah, yeah, 
I mean, they can. Saquon's been a beast. Um, they can. I. They just they play for Brian Dable. Yeah. Like I don't know what it is. They they play for Brian Dable. That guy right now to me is the runaway coach of the year. Uh, he's got this team playing on all cylinders, clicking on all cylinders. I think they could go two or three weeks without Saquon Barkley, and they could still be able to tread water um, and, and, and keep their head above. Um, you know, I st- I'm still baffled by the guy who called Tua the goat. Like I, I <laughs> uh, Rogue Jedi called him the goat. <laughs> I, like, oh, wow. Hey, wow. It is what it is. We we will be talking about the GOAT here in just a little bit after we get through some more of these comments. One Pride 40 popped up in the chat. Hey, One Pride 40, I got some merch for you. Uh, maybe next year since 1957, head over to manhourradio.com and, 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 and uh, click on that merch and get you some merch, man. But he says, Combs, how about those Lions? I mean, I mean look at them. I mean, eight bucks. <laughs> just do me a favor. Stand up real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Let me see that. Let me see that. What does that hoodie say? It says uh, maybe next year. Oh, maybe next year. It's got it's got the Lions logo on it, right? It, right I yeah. believe it does. Yeah. Look, I, look <laughs> they they beat the Bears. It, it was a good game. I don't expect the Bears to to, to win many games this year. Um, I'm actually happy that the the Bears played well. Uh, Justin Fields is still doing his thing, and we're still losing football games. So we get a better draft pick. Yeah. Like so. So thanks, Lions, for doing us a favor. Our guy's still doing well. He torched you all game long. And then we we missed an extra point, and it cost us the game. I mean, congratulations on the victory. It was a good victory. It was a hard-fought victory. Um, the Bears can't stop a nosebleed right now. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I'm still I'm still trying to do it as go. Does that stand for greatest of all traumatic head injuries? <laughs> Jesus. Calm down with that. He is fine. I don't Funny, hey, fun, fun fact here. Alpha Rob brought this up uh, that Tua has not been touched since he's come back from his injury, and I actually just looked it up. He has only been pressured on twenty percent of snaps and only sacked twice. So, and those sacks were uh, were uh, uh, run were run play option plays where he was out of the p- p- pocket. He just happened to be tackled behind a line of scrimmage, so it wasn't even like a sack. So. Did you did you see the um, the numbers on Justin Fields' pocket? So when he has a three step drop, he has two point three seconds to get rid of the ball on average. Right. When he has a five step drop, he has a two point one second average to get rid of the ball. And when he has a seven step drop, he has a one point three second average to get rid of the football. How gross is that? Dude, they have $114 million cap space. <laughs> they better spend $114.7 million of that on freaking offensive line help yep. this offseason. Yeah, they 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 need to get about four four deep on all on all five spots here. Yeah. No, but absolutely. Before we move on to the next topic, the key topic of today's show here, uh uh Drew over here at YouTube.com says that the Philadelphia Eagles will will now play looser and be more dangerous threat in the NFL since they're no longer fighting that undefeated season. What are your thoughts about that? See, I I always wonder about that. I always wonder if teams if it's in the back of their mind, you know, hey, we're undefeated, we really want to stay undefeated. Right. And I might have I might have I might have bought that if it wasn't a division rivalry game, right? Like Washington is one of their the biggest rivals. Right. And and they've did, look, Washington's clicking on all Washington's impressive right now too. That defense is playing very well. The their offense has been playing very well. Um and, and I don't think they should go back from Taylor Henneke. I think Taylor Henneke should be their their starting quarterback the rest of the season, if you ask me. Facts. But they're going to get back to their winning ways, but mostly because they play the Colts this week. Whoa, whoa, easy. <laughs> and, then they, easy. and then they get, the, and then they get the, the, the Green Bay Packers. Like, I mean, two terrible teams before they finally get tested again by the Titans and the Giants. Um, you know, and then they get to beat up on my Bears, you know, before they finish against the, the Cowboys and the Giants again. But, right. you know, it, it they've... They're going to get back to their winning ways. I see them maybe losing two or three more games the rest of the season. They're going to be fine. They're going to be a, a real threat in the NFC. Uh, by real threat, I mean they're probably going to get bounced in the first round by like the seven seed or something. 
Okay, so I was going to add this comment to the end of our rundown, but uh, but one pride forty just fired up Alpha uh, Alpha Rob over here at YouTube.com for slash man hour. He says one pride forty says I got a hot take. The Lions will beat the Buffalo Bills on Thanksgiving. <laughs> so Combs, let me ask you this: one pride forty is obviously a Detroit Lions 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 fan. Alpha Rob obviously is a Buffalo Bills fan. If I remember correctly, the Detroit Lions haven't won on Thanksgiving in many, many years. Maybe next year, right? Maybe next year they'll they'll win. Can the Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving morning beat the Buffalo Bills? I mean... Does Buffalo forfeit after playing in six feet of snow? Uh, no. I mean, I do got my Buffalo I mean, are they Bills show shirt on right, right, right here. Do I need to pop that up for you? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> it's a Chiefs shirt. I, look, I, I don't – I wouldn't bet on it. Like, I'm not putting money on it. I mean, I, you know, I know Lions fans are all puffed up after beating the, the Chicago Bears, but let right. me just give you a little hint here. Um, coming from a Bears fan, the Bears aren't very good. Um, so the fact that you were able to score on a defense that just is not very good um, does not show you what you're going to do. And and what you knew going into that game, you knew, and that's what I keep telling people, the defense knew the only way to stop the Bears was to contain Justin Fields, and they still couldn't do it. What are you going to do when you got to play Josh Allen, who's a bigger version of Justin Fields, but he also has weapons <laughs> like the 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 Bills are prone to probably put up fifty points, maybe sixty points on the Detroit Lions. The Bills are going to win that one running away. I I mean, look, it's the NFL. Nothing would surprise me anymore, especially with this season. I think I think we still only have half, or maybe even less than half, of the teams in the league have a five hundred or better record. Um, you know, so I I'm not. I wouldn't pick it, um, but. It, you know, if, if something crazy happened, it wouldn't shock me. But I, I mean, unless Josh Allen it doesn't play, I, I'm not. I'm not picking the Lions in that game. Sorry, Will Pride. Yeah, and uh, Rogue Jedi says I don't think it's even likely if Case Keenum starts. Whoa, buddy. Yeah. yeah Whoa. See, hey, hey, hang on here, Combs. We said Case Keenum is better for the Buffalo Bills than Josh Allen. I I picked. I picked. I thought I didn't think Josh Allen was playing this weekend. Right. Against Minnesota. And I still picked the Bills to win with Case Keenum, um, because I thought I think the Bills are good enough to win with Case Keenum. Right. Case Keenum, when he was a starting quarterback with the Minnesota Vikings, he was a pretty damn good starting quarterback. And you give him the times. weapons, and, and and you give him what he's got. I I think that they would be all right under Case Keenum, and I would still probably pick them against the lions. I mean, I'd, I'd pick anybody, but the bears to beat the lions at this point. I don't know, man. I have faith in the Detroit lions. I will be rooting for the Detroit, Detroit lions. Just, just because my dad will be here and I want him to put some outlets in my garage and I don't, and I don't want want him like, uh, like, (laughs) like upset. Uh, (laughs) But Combs, it is that time of night. The outlets, man, don't worry. Go ahead. Piss them off. (laughs) It's, it's, it's time for way or, or, or no way. No way. Yes way. And guys, way or no way is exactly what it sounds like. I give me and myself, or me and myself, Kabisti and myself a <laughs> statement, and we simply answer the question, is it a way or no way, and give some analysis behind it. So the first one up of the night here, Combs, is I went over to NFL.com, and they released the uh, their weekly quarterback. You know, they basically put quarterbacks in a ranking moving forward. Right now, Tua oh, is God. sitting at number five behind Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and I don't don't remember the rest. Maybe like Tom Brady. I I, I, oh. I don't know. But Tua is sitting at number five right now. I was jumping on the AFC East trash talk group that we have over here at facebook.com forward slash man hour sports. And people are ranting and raving saying that Tua is going to win the MVP this season, Combs. So way or no way. With the 71% completion rated so far this year, 
Over 2,200 yards, 18 touchdowns, and three interceptions. Tua is the front runner of to win the MVP this season. Way or no way? I'm gonna say no way. Um, you know, right now, if I if I'm having a vote, I might not even give it to to a quarterback right now. Um, I know it's a primarily quarterback driven award, and that's what everybody wants to see. But if I'm going, if I'm going with MVP, I'm looking into Minnesota right now, and I'm looking at Justin Jefferson. Right. Um, I when you talk about quarterbacks and ranking them at number five, we actually I actually did this the other day um, as an exercise with somebody about about Justin Fields. Actually, I went through it team by team by team. You know, would you Justin Fields or this guy? Justin Fields or that guy? And, and we I think we had Justin Fields at, at six or seven, and I think people would think that that's crazy too. But when you start looking at it quarterback by quarterback, I would say two is probably in that five to seven range, right? Like I, I wouldn't be mad at people right now for taking Tua over Justin Fields. I wouldn't be mad right now for people taking you go in his own division, right? You're taking him over over Zach, right? Um, taking him over Zach Wilson? Uh pro- yeah, I mean Zach was yeah. Zach was I mean, Zach, yeah, yeah. Zach's not playing playing well. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you take him over Mac Jones, right? Uh Probably, yeah. Yeah. And you go go away from his division because you're not taking him over Josh Allen, right? That's crazy. No. That's crazy talk. You're not taking Even him over Josh Allen. Point. Let's just go with let's just go with the top quarterback. Are you taking him over Lamar? Uh no. I think I think Lamar so is better than than You taking him two. over Joe Burrow? <sighs> Hell no. Probably not. Hell no. no. Yeah. No. I wouldn't even what are you thinking about? I wouldn't even think about that one. Well uh, the the reason that I hesitated is because Jamar Chase is out for Joe for Joe Burrow and you know he is his well, number right, one. Right, but I'm, I'm saying as a quarterback, you're, we're saying if we put all these quarterbacks on the same field, oh, okay, right, with the same player, I got that, you. I, I mean, got that's you. how you usually do. Right. Okay. You know, so so he's better than any quarterback in the AFC South, right? You're not gonna you're not gonna take any of those guys. Right. I mean, unless you're, I, are you taking? Um, no, I'm uh, not taking Ryan Ryan Tannehill. Over Tannehill. Over no. Okay. Um, you, then you go to the AFC West, and, and I could tell you there's three quarterbacks there I'd rather have than Tua. I'm, I'm taking Patty Mahomes over him. Right. I'm taking Justin Herbert over Tua, and I'm probably taking Derek Carr over Tua. Right. Okay. So that's six. And you go to go to the NFC. Are you taking Jalen Hurts over Tua? Right now, Hurts is performing, so no. Okay. What about Dak Prescott? <sighs> yeah, probably. So that's seven. Now you're taking them over Danny Dimes, probably. Yeah. You're taking them over Henneke. Yep. Right. Taking them over Kirk Cousins. You're probably taking them over at this point. You're taking them over. Well, hang, hang, hang on. Kirk Cousins is putting up MVP numbers, better numbers than last year when he should have won the MVP over Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm going that. I. I we can make that all right. I'll give, I'll give it to you. So so there's eight you have over Tua. What about do you, do you, Justin Fields? Would you take Justin Fields or Tua? Uh, Moving forward for the next 10 years, who are you taking? Uh, Justin Fields. Okay. So Tom Brady, you'll probably take him over at this point. Mariota, you take him over at this point. I don't know who the Panthers quarterback is, but you take him over him at this point. Yep. Um, uh, the Saints, yeah, I mean, I'm – I'm definitely, I'm taking him over Jameis at this point. Um, Geno Smith, uh, Jimmy G, take him over there. Matt Stafford, you're taking him over there. You're taking him over Kyler? Oh, yeah, 100%. Kyler sucks. Okay. So, so right now, you would have Tua at nine. Right. You know what I mean? So, so that's where people get all up in arms because you start thinking about who, who would you rather have? And you start looking at all the other quarterbacks. And that's how how people look at it. But look, people are always going to defend their guy. I mean, that's just what it is. Like me, I'm always going to defend Justin Fields, right? Because I I go into it and people are always like, oh, well, Justin Fields, he's just a runner. He's just this. He's getting the same stuff that Lamar Jackson gets, right? But then you got to defend him, right? There's a he's he's a runner because he has no offensive line and he has no weapons. He has no choice but to run the ball. I just told you the times that he has in his own pocket, right? So he has to be a runner. So but people will defend Tua being fifth but then the people that don't aren't dolphins fans they're gonna be like wait a minute tua like I'm, I'm taking a lot of people over tua especially with concussion issues like i don't know if tua is going to play next week like so i i don't agree with tua being fifth 
Um, but I, I, I don't have a problem with them being in that five to seven range. So here's the problem that I have with Tua even being considered for the MVP. Normally, when you win an MVP, you have to play a complete season, right? Tua has missed three games already this season because of injury issues. Now, on the flip side of the coin, he has been undefeated when he has played, right? So as a quarterback, mm -hmm. excuse me, as a quarterback starting in any of the game, he is undefeated. So I can see where that MVP talk could come into play. But when it comes to push and shove, I want to give the MVP to a player that I know is going to be there week in and week out. Justin Herbert. Hell, I think Geno Smith is probably the front runner for the MVP this year. He is hands down the most valuable player on the Seattle Seahawks team. Where would they be without him? Think about this, Combs. Uh, Preseason. We all thought he was going to be a one and done. Week one, he is going to shit the bed. The Seahawks are going to suck. They're going to put in Drew Locke, Jacob Easton, whoever, right? Hello. The Seahawks are in first place in the NFC West. They are firmly a competitive team right now. And they went to Arizona. They whooped the Arizona Cardinals. Geno Smith is probably the front runner of the MVP. Tua, to, to me, is probably not even in the conversation. The only reason why people are putting them in the conversation is because the Dolphins are currently in first place in the best division of football, and that's the only reason why. And like it, it the MVP is a very skewed award at the end of the day. Right now in the NFL, MVP means best quarterback on the best team. They they need to change 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 it because I think Geno Smith is a true most valuable player for for his team, hands down. No, like, what are your thoughts about that? Should Geno Smith be in consideration? I think Geno Smith's got to be in consideration right now. I mean, we, I, nobody's talking, just like I said, nobody's talking about the Minnesota Vikings and being 8-1. and one. Nobody's talking about what Geno Smith is doing in Seattle and how impressive it is because we looked at this uh, a year ago and Russell Wilson, who got this big old monstrous contract in Denver, who isn't living up to it there either, he wasn't able to do this in Seattle. And now you've got Geno Smith taking over, and he's completing 70% of his passes. And and he's looking like a quarterback that is, is rejuvenated again. I mean, this was Geno freaking Smith, right? This is the same Geno Smith we watched all those years with the New York Jets and, and eventually just became a, a journeyman backup quarterback before all of a sudden – we're hearing from him again last year as the backup in Seattle, and now he's their starter, and he's completing 73% of his passes and, and lighting the world up, and they're leading the AFC West or NFC West. So I I like Geno Smith. I like what he's doing. He definitely should be in consideration for MVP, Comeback Player of the Year, all sorts of different awards he should be acknowledged for. Yeah, and let's not forget about who his coach was in New York. It was Rex Ryan. Not a very good yeah. coach. Let's just be honest about it. Like, he's a good analyst, and he has the widest teeth I've ever seen, right? They get wider and wider every freaking day. But, yeah, he just he, he wasn't a very good head coach in the end. But moving right. on to the next one, let's move on down south here, and that is to the New Orleans Saints. Andy Dalton has officially been named starter moving forward for the foreseeable future for the New Orleans Saints. Jameis Winston is still nursing that injured back. Combs, with that being said, you think Jameis Winston is a top 15 quarterback when healthy, obviously. So with all that being said, way or no way, Jameis Winston's career in New Orleans is officially over with this most recent injury. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think Jameis' career is over. I, I don't know why they keep going to Andy Dahl. If the Saints offense wants to stop being so stagnant, they need to bring Jameis back into the game and actually open it up for him. Allow Jameis to play the game. If he throws a bunch of interceptions, let him throw a bunch of interceptions. Let me ask you a question, Buck. Would you rather have Jameis Winston who throwing for, you know, 70% completion and throwing for, for, yeah, I, I don't know, maybe 
maybe 2,000 yards in a season and maybe you win four or five of those games? Or would you rather have this guy lighting it up, throwing 15 or 16 interceptions, which is his average, throwing for 4,000-plus yards, which is his average, and throwing for 20-plus touchdowns, which is his average? Like, let the kid loose. Let the kid play. Stop handcuffing him. That is why your offense has been so sad. That's why Jameis hasn't been successful. That's why he would have been successful had they not changed coaches. But that's why he hasn't been successful in New Orleans because they're not letting him be play loose. They're not letting him be who Jameis Winston is, which is a dynamic player who can make plays. You've got to let the kid loose. Take the handcuffs off. And, and get Andy Dalton out from under center. We we seen this show last year in Chicago. It doesn't work. He's not that guy anymore. He had a decent career when he was with the Cincinnati Bengals. He is not that guy anymore. Put Andy Dalton to bed. Get Jameis Winston back out there, and, and this this offense will flourish under Jameis Winston. Combs, what color is your beard? Well, gray and red. Mine is red as two. What color is Andy Dalton's beard or hair? Red, right? Why are you yeah. not supporting fellow gingers? <laughs> Why are you being racist, Combs? Like, Dalton is trash. Andy Dalton's a top 15 quarterback in the league. Talk about being That's handcuffed. Said, Talk about said, being handcuffed. Being Andy Dalton <laughs> is being handcuffed by Michael Thomas being, quote, injured, Alvin Kamara doing whatever, like, this Saints organization, or this, this this Saints team right now, Combs, it is a complete dash d- d- disaster shithole right now. It's just, it is crazy to me to even think, like, would Jameis Winston be any better than Andy Dalton? And the answer is no. If you think Jameis Winston is a top 15 quarterback, by default, Andy Dalton is a top 15 quarterback because they would still both be have three wins. They that they would still be you know well I think they're third in the AFC South or or sorry the uh, NFC South I mean they would both be where they're at right now so obviously if Jameis Winston is a top fifteen quarterback by therefore Andy Dalton has to be a top fifteen quarterback as well but with all that being said has Jameis Winston played more than like ten games in New Orleans I don't think he has because what he tore his ACL right. And now his back injury, yeah. and then he was a backup to uh, 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 Drew uh, Drew Brees. So out of three years, out of thirty six possible games, right, he has played like ten. Like they have a quarterback from your Notre Dame Irish on there. I forget his name, uh, Ian Book, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, he he definitely has a chance to He's be the future ready. on that team. Get Andy Dalton out of there. Shift, ship Jameis off to uh, Carolina where all these other quarterbacks are like, are like head. Why not have three first round overall picks all like, all like in your in your quarterback, quarterback back room. So yes, I'm going to go with way that Jameis Winston's career is over in new Orleans. Now in the NFL, Yet to be determined. Like, how old is he? He's probably, what, 32, isn't he, or so? So he he might be done in the NFL. I I, I don't know. I mean, no, he's he's not that old. Is he? He's probably, like, 29, right? Who, cool. Jameis? Yeah. No, he's got to be 30, 31, somewhere in there. Yeah, but either way, um, let's let's backtrack, a, like, a little bit to this Tua conversation that we had. Jared Parrott over here at Facebook.com forward slash Man Hour Sports, he mm-hmm. asked a question. For MVP voting right now, who would get more votes, Tyree Kill or Tua Tagovailoa? Uh, God, I, I think I think Waddle's been the better receiver of the two, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, uh, Tyree Kill has. He doesn't have the stats, right? I think he's found the end zone like maybe twice, and now he's oh, put James up some Winston's numbers. Only Twenty-eight, right? by the way. Say that again. Jameis Winston's only twenty eight. Oh, really? Damn. Uh, yeah. But but yeah, I mean, I kill. He has been that dynamic factor on tape, but stat wise, he just doesn't have it. Yeah, I I, I think that. God, I I don't know that you would give it to to Hill. I. I really do want to say that that Jalen Waddle has been their better. 
Oh, he has. Receiver. He has a hundred percent. No, Ty- Tyreek Hill's got more more receiving yards than him, though. Well, let's look at touchdowns. J- Jalen Waddle probably has like nine. Does doesn't he versus Tyreek Hill's two or three? Jalen Waddle has six. six Tyreek Hill has four. Okay, uh, but Jalen uh, Tyreek Hill has three hundred more yards, thirty more catches. Uh, he's also got uh, twenty thirty more targets. Um, so he's looking for Tyreek Hill a lot more. Right. So I yeah I mean. Eh, I guess maybe in, in that aspect, I guess maybe you do give it to Hill. Um, I Because Hill was able to do it while Tua was out, too, though. That's the thing. Like, Hill well, was still able to keep them, you know, a, at least a relevant offense. I mean, they, they were losing a lot of games while Tua was out. But I don't know. I, I, I just don't – I don't look at Tua as a – it's just I don't know. Maybe I'm just maybe it's just me. Maybe it's because I, I'm just not a believer in, in Tua. If I had a vote between the two, I would vote for Tua over Tyree Kill because Tua is undefeated this season when he starts and ends a game. Tyree Kill did not make game changing plays on that three game losing streak that they had earlier this season. So that's why I would vote Tua. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. All right, guys, moving on to the next way or no way. No way. Yes way. Week 11 of the NFL season is officially here. The Cowboys have officially moved on from their loss in Green Bay, but now they travel up north again to take on the Minnesota Vikings this weekend. They are officially listed as underdogs versus the Vikings. The Vikings have arguably come off one of their biggest wins of the season over the Buffalo Bills last weekend as well. So, Combs, Dallas Cowboys are sitting at 6-3. and three. Miami, or sorry, and the Minnesota Vikings are sitting at 8-1. and one. Way or no way, the Dallas Cowboys can pull the upset over the Vikings. Um, I mean, yeah, the way, I mean, they, they can, they're still a good football team. They still got a really good defense. Uh, Dak Prescott's not a slouch. Their receiving core is pretty damn good too. Um, they're not the, the Minnesota Vikings. They don't have just Jefferson, but they're still, they're, they're a pretty good team. Um, so th- it is a way, I mean, it's a possibility. I I'm going to pick the Vikings in this game though, because I just think the Vikings are a better team. Um, Dallas always seems to find a way to, to lose, uh, games like this, but you know, I, I just think that the Minnesota Vikings are a better team. Um, but yeah, it's a way that them Dallas can find a way to win, especially in this year's NFL. Yeah. So you, you definitely kind of edged your bets here like a little bit. Well, there's a way they can win, but I'm going to pick the Vikings. Well, there is. Uh, I mean, I mean, obviously there's always a way to win, but are they going to win? Absolutely. Freaking lutely. The Dallas Cowboys are the best team in the A and the NFC. Yes, they shit the bed Stop. in overtime because their coach freaking sucks, but let's just move on past that point. So Mike McCarty, fire Mike McCarty, hashtag fire him. Let's get that trending on the old Twitter machine. But, guys, the Dallas Cowboys is going to go into, I don't even know the name of the field anymore. It's not even the, the Metrodome. They're the third best team in their division. It, no, they're not. They're, they're better than the Eagles. They're better than the Giants. They're better than the Vikings. They're better than the 49ers. The Dallas Cowboys are the best team in, in the NFC, Combs. Their record may not reflect it right now, but do not let them get hot and be hot in the playoffs because they are a Super Bowl team, and they're going to win the Super Bowl if they make it past the first round of the playoffs. And to them, this is the first round of the uh, the playoffs for them. They're kind of in this must-win situation versus the Minnesota Vikings. You remember when we were saying last week how the Buffalo Bills, this was kind of of like a prove-it game for them versus the Buffalo Bills. This is a prove-it game for the Dallas Cowboys going up against the 8-1 and Minnesota Vikings. Like, hey, don't you guys forget about us. Yes, we shit the bed. Our coach shit the bed versus the Green Bay Packers. But, hey, we are here. CeeDee Lamb is the man. Do not sleep on the Dallas Cowboys, Combs. Do not sleep on them. They are the best team in the NFC, period. They're, they're not the best team in the NFC. They're, they're not. Um, Come and you on. said you said don't let them get hot. Yeah, they, they were hot, all right. The, the hot garbage against the Green Bay <laughs> Packers, and and so I I don't. Uh, they're not the best team in the NFC. They're not better than the Eagles right now. They're not even better than the Giants right now. And I've been saying that for weeks, which is why the Giants are in the power rankings and the Dallas Cowboys are not because they're not better than those teams. And you know, 
there's they're not I don't even think right now they're not better than the Seahawks. If you want to go that route, the Cowboys beat the Giants head to head. They should be better out of the mail right than that. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Hashtag Facebook trolls for the win. But uh, come on. Definitely they're going to beat the Minnesota Vikings. Come on, man. Last okay. where no way of the night comes. Are you ready for the next one? Let's do it. No way. Yes way. And for the last way or no way of this beautiful Wednesday edition of Man Hour Sports, if you guys have not done so already, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button as well. We are live every Monday through Thursday, 8 p.m. East Coast time current, currently. But the AFC West, guys, we all thought this division was going to be one of the best divisions in football. People are saying the Denver Broncos were Super Bowl absent like aspirations. The Raiders are going to be so good with Devontae Adams. Don't forget to sleep on the Chargers. The Chiefs are going to be... Combs, I believe you said they're going to miss the playoffs and be the worst team in the division. Is is, is my mind serving me correctly? Like on that? No, I said the Broncos are going to be the worst team in that division. Well, I said the Chiefs were going to be third. Okay, so definitely not first place. But right now, they are the number yeah. one overall seed in the AFC playoffs if they were to start today, sitting at 7-2. and two. They had one of the hardest schedules ever their first eight games uh, to start a NFL season. But now, on the back half of the schedule, they do have the seventh, seventh easiest schedule on the back half. So, Combs, way or no way... The Kansas City Chiefs will have home field advantage and the number one overall seed in the playoffs this season. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, no way. Um, you know, they've got they, I, people keep saying that they got like the seventh easiest schedule, and, and maybe I don't know what what math that they're using, but I mean, they they've got the Chargers. Look, the Rams are banged up, so the Rams just aren't good. Um, but they got the Bengals. They they do got the Broncos, who always seem to give them trouble in in mile high. Um, they've got the Seahawks, and then they've got the Raiders, who are always a thorn in their side. Um, I th- believe they beat the Raiders by what one point earlier this season. Uh, sounds it? sounds right. I think it was like thirty yeah, so, to twenty eight or something like that. Yeah. yeah, and they usually split with the Raiders. It's just how it goes. Um, so I I think they probably lose two, maybe three more games. Um, and I think that the, the Buffalo bills probably only lose one more game. Um, so I, I think the Buffalo bills end up taking that number one spot back. Uh, I think the Buffalo bills will run away with the AFC East. Cause I don't believe in the, the jets or the, or the dolphins keeping pace. So I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's a no way they won't be the number one seed when it's all said and done. Yeah. And, uh, let me put a full disclaimer out there. I am a Kansas city chiefs fan. I got the. Super Bowl hat oh, right know. there, and, um, and a and a and a Colts fan, and a Packers fan, <laughs> and a Cowboys fan, right. and you've been hanging out with Michael Blanc too much, right? But the Chiefs are yeah. my number one team. I do have a Super Bowl hat, uh, Combs. I know you haven't seen one of those in a very very long time. I believe since eighty five, right? Um, I was even born well, in that. Yeah, we uh, were in the Super Bowl in two thousand eight. You were in there, but did you win it? No, they okay. stopped pressuring for right. Peyton Manning. But with that being said. There, the, I see your Buffalo Bills, and I do believe they will be ranked higher in the playoffs than the Kansas City Chiefs. So that right there puts them at number two. So that is a no way right off the bat. However, there is a team that we've all been kind of sleeping on, and this is a team that the Kansas City Chiefs just beat at Arrowhead Stadium, uh, twenty to seventeen. I believe that was a Sunday night game, right? Um, that that is the Tennessee Titans, guys. The Tennessee Titans rattled off five games in a row. Yes, they did lose um, last week, right? Uh, uh, but guys, this 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 team is what they're seven and two, right, Combs? Or yeah, yeah like they are a really really good football team. They're five and three. My mistake. Five and three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but like looking at their schedule moving forward, they could definitely run the table like we want to talk about easier schedules this team does have a easier schedule they do play the green bay packers the resurging green bay packers let me use those air quotes very very loosely there 
Uh, and then they play. They, they win that game. Yeah. And then they play the Bengals. Jamar Chase probably won't be back. And they're at Tennessee. This is a revenge game. And then they play the Eagles. They're probably going to lose that one. But then they play the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Chargers, Houston Texans, Dallas Cowboys, and then the Jaguars again. I mean, I realistically only see one or two more losses on their schedule moving forward. So that puts them at the dead race with the Buffalo Bills, the Chiefs, and the Titans. But I think they only lose one game for the rest of the season, and that puts them at the number one seed, Combs. Like, I... I, well, it would put the Bills at the number one. If they finish at the same record as the Bills, Bills get the number one seed because they lost to the Bills right. forty-one to seven earlier. Right. Yeah, head to head. Yep. Um, but I, I see what you're saying. I, I don't want to say that that we're sleeping on them because for one, the quarterback's been hurt. Um, they, you know, they did lose to the the Chiefs last week. They beat the Broncos this past week. Um, so. I, man, they started out zero and two, right? And now they're they're one, two, three, four, five. They're six and three, not five and three. Six and three are the Titans. Um, so I would say, I would say, you, you, I I don't see it. I don't see them being the number one seed because they they do they fade down the stretch. They get worse as they go because of how how reliable that offense is on King Henry. Right, um, and it's hard for a running back to sustain that for a full season. Like King Henry is a beast, um, but he you can't you can't be given the ball to your your running back when you're down by twenty points in the fourth quarter, and and when he brings you back, just rely on that week after week after week. Right. Um, so I, I'm gonna say no. I, I don't see them. I don't see the Titans being slept on. I just I don't think that they're they're that good. I think it's between the Bills and the Chiefs for the number one seed. Yeah, and uh, I I think it's a three a three horse race, and I think I mean I definitely do not see the Kansas City Chiefs getting that number one overall overall seed, and they seem to be better as underdogs anyway. So kind of give them that that underdog role, right? Why mm-hmm. not? So. Um, we do got a couple comments that I was uh, I told that I was going to address here later in the show, and this is let me scroll all the way back up here. This is from Casey Morgan, and uh, Combs, as we know, Josh McDaniels is the Raiders' um, head coach currently. Uh, what's their owner's name that needs a freaking haircut, like Al Davis Jr. or something? I don't know whatever freak his name is. Uh, yeah, Al Davis Jr. <laughs> he is freaking ugly as. <laughs> Dog crap. But he says that Josh McDaniel's job is safe and he's doing an excellent job. However, Raiders fans are screaming to get Josh McDaniels fired. Should should the Raiders I, fire Josh Josh McDaniels? I I wouldn't fire Josh McDaniels. I yeah, I mean the, he's he's in his first year with the team. I mean, they've been injured, they've been playing hurt like I Give him a couple of years. Let him try to build a team. Let's see what he can do. You know, if by by the end of year three, if a coach isn't good, then I, I say go ahead and get. But you got to give him some time. I mean, look at what Matt Nagy, his first year with the Bears, went twelve and four, and they went to the NFC title game. Right. Like so, I you don't. And and then what was he towards the end of after that? He was he was garbage. So I I don't. You can't judge it just by their first year. You got to give them some time. <laughs> so I did see a crazy stat about Josh McDaniels, right? He was the Denver Broncos head coach about five, six years ago, right? He was 6-0 and starting out the season, and then they got caught filming teams' practices. Since then, he is 1-24 as a head coach. Wow. Wrap your head around that. That's around bad. That. Yeah. That's bad. 1-24. But it is what it is. Right, maybe right? you don't give him time. You know what? Fire him. Fire him. <laughs> Get out while you can. <laughs> I, I, but like, I, I don't, I, I don't understand like what the, uh, like what the thought process is of of hiring a guy that clearly cannot get the job done, right? They're like, hey, since he's underneath Bill Belichick and win all these championships, he's got to be good, right? Good at taping and cheating. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, hey, you want a high draft pick? Hire Josh McDaniel. Right, exactly. <laughs> and honestly, I think that's why, why probably why the Colts went for Jeff Saturday, <laughs> and then he messed up and won a game. Yeah. Hey, 
Colts are Super Bowl or a playoff bound too, baby. Oh God! Send us out, big guy. This week, send us out. Man, our nation, rise up. <laughs>